Congressman Jim Banks is a member of the House Armed Services Committee and chairman of the Republican Study Committee. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, this is a topic of conversation at uh, a little discussion group I went to yesterday. What's the off-ramp here? Is there an off-ramp? Yeah, I don't know, John. I mean, this administration has shown us many different scenarios. They briefed us a handful of times since Russia invaded Ukraine. And there's no scenario that ends necessarily with a positive outcome. The only thing we can hope for here is to continue to give the people of Ukraine a fighting chance, give them the lethal weapon, the military equipment that Zelensky has been begging us for, not just to members of Congress over the weekend, but I was at the Munich Security Conference three weeks ago before Russia invaded Ukraine, and President Zelensky asked for everything that he asked for over the weekend. And it, it, was, it was everything before the invasion, saying we need it now to stop it from happening. But, but the president, President Biden's weakness uh, and everything leading up to the invasion and everything after so far has only made this situation get worse. And worse. As you pointed out, Zelensky's been pleading for munitions and weapons uh, since Russia began the invasion, but he was also begging for that for months leading up to the invasion. And he said this earlier today about sanctions not being enough to stop Putin. Listen here. It's a this is murder, deliberate murder. Think about the sense of impunity of the invaders. They announced their planned atrocities. Why? Because there is no reaction, because there is silence, not a word, as if Western leaders have dissolved tonight. The audacity of the aggressor is a clear signal to the West that sanctions against Russia are not enough. Sanctions against Russia are not enough, and, and he's claiming that the West is silent about this. Clearly, the West is not silent because there are a lot of weapons that are flowing in. But what more can Congress do to try to help support Zelensky and Ukrainians in this fight? Well, there'll be an opportunity this week to provide a humanitarian package that includes both humanitarian aid and more funding and military equipment on top of it. But the bad news, John, is that Democrats are holding it hostage and the overall omnibus spending bill. So this week we're going to uh, we have to avoid a government shutdown on Wednesday on Wednesday by passing some kind of a spending bill and instead of instead of putting the humani humanitarian aid for Ukraine on the side because it has broad bipartisan support, I guarantee it would pass. They put it as a part of this large spending bill that a lot of us are going to oppose because it's bloated, it continues to raise inflation and make life harder for most American families who are, who are having a hard enough time because of rising energy prices. So that, that's the bad news. Democrats have a chance here to, to lead, to show the rest of the world, not just Ukraine, but the entire world, that we're behind the people of Ukraine and instead they're playing politics. Yeah, it just it seems odd that Congress can't get together on this in a bipartisan fashion because time is of the essence. Ukraine may not last much longer. You know, Putin said over the weekend that any country that gets involved in a no-fly zone is going to be considered a combatant. And I'm wondering, how long is it going to be before he says any country that supplies arms to Ukraine is going to be considered a combatant? And he starts targeting those supply lines coming in from Poland and other countries. I'm reminded every day of, of the, the Reagan era mantra, peace through strength. And, and this is where we've failed leading up to this point, uh, where we, we haven't shown that type of strength. Thank God that during the Trump administration, we gave lethal aid to Ukraine because it's those weapons that they're using to fight back right now. But we have an opportunity this week, and I hope Congress can find a way to do it, to give Ukraine the support that they need. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm skeptical that will happen because of the games the Democrats and Pelosi are playing. Yeah, we see this horrible suffering of the Ukrainian people as they try to escape the Russian bombs and, and, and mortars and, and shells. But here at home, people are suffering economically as well. Oil touched $130 a barrel overnight. The price of gasoline is going way up, and yet the Biden administration doesn't seem to be able to do anything besides tap into the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which always has a minimal effect. Fact. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin said that the United States could easily get its way out of this oil crisis. Listen to what he said. We have the energy. We have the resources here. We have the technology. We're a million barrels short a day right now that we can just ramp up like that. We can do certain things. And we don't have to put any more pain on the American people that are already suffering with inflation now. This is a Democratic senator who clearly has been a little bit out of step with many of the other Democrats saying, we can solve this problem ourselves tomorrow. Just turn on the spigot. Why isn't the Biden administration doing that? Obviously, the Biden administration and Democrats are pandering to the radical environmentalists in their party who are using this moment, this conflict in Ukraine, to pass their radical climate change Green New Deal agenda. And that's the sad reality of it. We're well on our way to $5 a gallon gas 
on average across the country that twice would be as cheap much. cheap in California. It would be cheap in California or Washington, D.C., but for the, for the rest of America who's already suffering, it's only going to get worse because the Biden administration uh, refuses to do what needs to be done. Uh, start Restart construction on the Keystone Pipeline. Start, start drilling again on federal lands. More uh, contracts in New Mexico and the Arctic. I mean, this is, this is common sense. We saw it work for four years under President Trump. We were energy independent. And now Biden is going around the world uh, begging other adversaries like uh, Iran and uh, Venezuela, uh, other countries like Saudi Arabia to increase oil production when we could be doing it right here at home. Yeah, and I noticed that I saw a bulletin earlier today that the EPA is proposing new emission standards for trucks and buses. I'm thinking that's all well and good, but is now the time to be doing that? It's just insane. All right. Jim Banks.